himself getting patched by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So New off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting away, but Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Halle Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari lately or something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and Abrochi's dropped him all the way down the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Varani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Pushed more and fell and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike. Good have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Sensational run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just such a He's touched on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh, watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunching up now? Everybody and welcome to uh, Tail Racing. It's the Apex's Lava. It's the battle at the ring. Time for round five in the Arca series. Now, as we complete and get roughly halfway through our season three schedule, we're on the shortest of the combinations of this series, but 
By shortest, I don't really mean very short. Still 20 kilometres, more than through the North Life circuit, and we are pretty much ready to go racing. It's myself, Fiona Leary, James Parfit alongside me. Looking forward to this. I don't know how many times these Arca machines have been taken around this circuit, to be honest with you. I'm willing to bet it's not very many. We're about to see something a little bit different here today. Um, I'm willing to bet it's zero. Um, I, um, I, um, I reckon it is zero times that this car has been around this circuit. Who, in the God-given right mind, would put the Arca car on 154 corners at Nords? But the grid is up. There we go. Yeah, we just had qualifying, and it's Raymond Tew who's taken the pole position. 7 minute 10.1 ahead of Evan Krupwald, the championship leader. David Mull and Aaron Smith are on the second row, ahead of Rick Putnam and Curry Stas. Dean Diltz and David Hernandez are next, ahead of Patrick Mesh and Dan Kosick. Then it's Scott Sadler and AJ Condon just outside of the top ten. And then a couple more, Benjamin Lamberton and Chris Blandford rounding out the 14 on the grid. Although Blanford, to me, doesn't seem to have gotten away yet. Um, it is a rolling start, so we could start from the pit line, I suppose, but he's not rolling with the rest of the field at the moment. Uh, qualifying, I'd imagine, is, uh, has been quite important there because these cars may well not be too great at overtaking one another, to be honest, on the Nord Cypher. And the name of the game surely going to be survival for a lot of these drivers. Oh, in this car? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd be interested to know how many people get to, to finish this race because I can tell you what, if I've got 10 or 11, I would be very surprised because this is going to be a tough one in this tough car. It's tough around any road course, but we're about to take it to the toughest of all the road courses into the final corner. The battle at the ring will commence with Raymond Tew at the front of the field and already gets off to a good start. Out the final corner, pretty much goes straight away. Then Evan Cromwell gets involved and gets into second place and quite a long way ahead of the second row. Aaron Smith has got ahead of David Mull. That's a reversal of their qualifying positions. The same for Corey Stas and Rick Putnam, who started on row three together. They've reversed their qualifying positions, as have Dan Kosick and Patrick Mish. Other than that, it's been a clean start with relatively few changes into turn number one. Yeah, no real drama so far for all of these cars. Hopefully, I'm just trying to see them on the air and what we can see in the side of course and make sure that they can actually get to the end. Because let's be real, you can only score points in the championship if you finish. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of points on offer today from 14 of them. So hopefully these guys will get to it. It's going to be very tough, right? Because you're asking a house brick on wheels to turn left and right. And you need to for that. So this could be very, very interesting, especially this first run down into Alamobile as well. Who's going to be able to get the car stopped? Are they going to be able to get the car stopped? Well, yeah. that's going to be a question we're going to find out shortly especially because they're coming here with actually more speed than maybe even the GT3, because they're so quick in a straight line. So you really do have to stamp on the brakes. Can they get it stopped in time? Yes, just about. But you notice the difference, I think, in the preceding corner at Schwedenkreuz, which really is uh, almost... Oh, dear, we've got a car off. AJ Condon has got off, a, and he's recovered quite well in the 48, actually, but he has got off, and so did Lamberton only driver not to get it quite stopped in time so two different kinds of crashes there really you've got the losing grip from the high speed corner because uh, of the way these cars are built and you've got the not being able to stop in time we just saw both into Aramburg that time yeah we did both of them got it all a little bit wrong there didn't we we did say he was going to be able to get it stopped and the, the, one of them hit the grass on the way in and one just did not get it stopped at all so I think yeah, they're going to take, have to take that into consideration and they're going to have to make sure that they can obviously look at it and say, right, next time I've got to get it stopped here and break a little bit earlier. Stay off the grass as well. These cars are not designed for going onto the grass at all. Which ones are? Rally cross? Yeah, rally not cross. Many. That's about it. Not, not, not many, certainly. C certainly not many in this series. That, that is for sure. All road-based cars, of course. Mostly cars that see driving around this circuit very often thinking a little bit about the uh, the ff1600 uh, as well as the pro mazda although uh, that round uh, didn't oh, David uh, let's take any points oh dear we have got a uh, well a good recovery actually thought i was about to say we've got a spin oh now we do big spin oh. after miss hit miss and great avoidance from scott sadler who we were riding on board with there as in front of him dave hernandez also dan Kosick 
went off the road. That was a very nearly good save, I'm afraid. Slightly went wrong at the end. Yeah, he almost had it, didn't he? Almost. He got the power down to early, but somehow he managed to save it. Then he went sideways again, where he applied the power again. Too many beans, and it went sideways again. So, unfortunately, then he went back across the track, and poor old Dan Cossett got the cop end of that from his front end. So, yeah, tough for David Anders. Yes, we are aware Dave's obviously livery is white at the moment. And there seems to be a problem loading it in, where everybody else is in spine. So, if we do recognise Dave, he's the white one. Oh, this is only one, so we can turn it apart from the rest. Oh, David Mull very nearly lost it there. Uh, on the way towards Kesselschen, car just broke away from him, really. And uh, not only has Corey Stas got through, but Rick Putnam has also got through as well to return back to his qualifying position of P5, then into the Mook Curva. This is tricky. High speed again. And uh, for once, turning left at high speed, not the... Uh, in the banking to help them oh. on the ovals of course there's the wheel work <laughs> uh, we'll have a look periodically throughout the race on board with these guys looking at the at the wheel work that they're putting on because i bet it is a busy busy race for everybody just completing a lap round here oh it's going to be tough it is going to be tough they've got four laps to do here it is going to be so tough to see how they get on. Um, I've got a funny feeling there's going to be more wiggle work coming up through the next section here as well, because he's got to go left up the hill, then he's got to go hard on the brakes to get it to turn right, and then he's got to get it hard again to try and get it turned right again. So he's got to start stamping now, get it turned, get it turned, then he's got to look up. Now this is where he can go relatively full power all the way through. Well, not full power, maybe not in these cars, but generally you're on the gas all the way through this section, slight little dab of the brakes to get it rotated over the inside kerb and now you're going to be on the brakes again around the right hander down a gear you go get it through get it through and now you can go again but yeah they're going to be their arms are going to be absolutely knackered after this one because it is just so tough and you don't want to be on the curves either we talk about this often for the nerving 24 hours but really it applies to any car to be honest there's not many cars that can survive the level of curvage that you get around here at the North Side. Maybe only the V8 supercars, but they're not very well used anymore. So it's uh, really about staying off them for the most part. Certainly down here towards Grand Scotland. Oh. Interesting, actually, that oh. even though these cars don't have as much downfalls as some of the others that we've already been through this circuit with, like the GT3 cars, the TCRs have probably got a bit more downfalls in terms of their wings, but going over Flans Garten at such a slow speed that actually, despite the lack of downforce, these cars don't get air across the jump. We traditionally call it a jump. GT3, you certainly do, but you're slowing down so much in these cars oh. to actually get around the corner, you're not quite getting uh, off the ground, which is unusual. Yeah, I kind of would have expected them to be up in the air and, and away you go. And through the mini carousel they go. Corey Stas has got Rick Putnam closing in. Eric Krapel here as well. He's already taken two wins this season. He's done a great job, Eric. And he's so consistent. Literally, just keeping the car on the racetrack is his biggest thing here. And he's managed to gain points and, of course, he's leading the championship. But I think he, there's going to be a lot involved with this car, you know. Um, well, we know there's going to be a lot involved. Let's just face it, they're going to be, arms are going to be flailing around trying to hold on to that steering. They're not made for this, uh, not at all. We've lost the Patrick Messick is in the pits lane. Everybody else is still out on the racetrack at the moment. So fair play to them for getting to the end of this if they can. Yeah, good, uh, good attrition rate, as in it's low for the opening lap, that's for sure. We focus on the battle for second place. As you mentioned, Nevin Krupp been on the podium every race so far this season which is uh, a fantastic record it's off it has gone Corey Stas into the tear garden it's a big big stop at the end of the tossing uh, her there and Stas has got it wrong or was he just going into the pit lane he might have crashed and then gone into pit lane or he might have uh, been slowing down and losing places because he was trying to get in the pit lane which is not an easy task around it I've seen these cars which are quite big so actually fitting down the lane is quite difficult in subways He's in now, and he drops down the field. But just to put that podium record of Grapvard into context here, he's the only driver to do that, of course. But of the other two race winners this season, Grapvard has got the other two, uh, they've not finished 
a single race again. They've not scored a single other point other than their victory, Pat Labros and Conor Catella. So that's showing you the consistency that Grap has got. Jason Hightower, who's second in the championship, has only got a couple of podiums so far. Matt Green, who's third, has got one. And Corey Stas, who's fourth, has got no po uh, uh, podium so far. So that just gives you an idea of quite the astonishing record of the championship leader, who we're watching just up ahead in the blue and white, get all out of shape into Schrodenkreutz. He gets it stopped in time. And then on the brakes for Arenberg as well. He has just about stopped that in time too, but heads up moments all over the place in these cars. Really focus. And that goes for every single corner. Sometimes we discount some of them. It's not really corners because they're flat out or whatever. There's a few of those in these cars. It's quite a, quite astonishing. Yeah, I think um, I think there's two challenges of this track, right, with a car choice. One, I would definitely not put the Arca Menards on it. And two, it's like putting a W13 on it. You know, they're both of them aren't going to go so well. And they're kind of just... It, it's really tough to explain because obviously, as you know, they used to go in left constantly. Right, they use the banking to help their rotation, or they've got to try and get, you know, brake dragging it round the corner and that sort of thing. Here, they've actually got to try and stop these absolute beasts of a car to try and get them to go left and right. And if anybody at home thinks, oh, this is easy, well, go and get an Art Governor to take it round Norge and see how you get on. As oh, Aaron Smith is showing here, he's doing a great job here. Look at the the, the input he's having to give it just to try and get it rotated. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite amazing from all of these guys that they're still running, to be honest, or most of them are anyway. Corey Stas has gone back to the main now. I'm afraid at the at, well, trying to complete some of lap two, it's not uh, it's not quite work for him. I'm afraid. Uh, also, don't confuse this car with the general. <laughs> I, I've just realised why now is that they do actually look identical, and. Uh, you may remember this. I wanted to do a race in what is the Gen 4 series um, at Watkins Glen before. Yes. So, so I do have a bit of experience with how... I think you commented on that. I did. Um, yeah, OK. Uh, <laughs> and there was... Uh, it, there was uh, well, I was doing a bit of practice, of course, beforehand. Uh, then got into the session, realised I've been practising in the Arkham Menards car and not the Gen 4 car because they are identical. And uh, so that was not my best value. But, I tell you, the Gen 4 is a lot more difficult to contend with. I'm not going to say this car is easy, but it is easier, that's for sure. A little bit less horsepower, a few less revs, maybe, uh, maybe helping out a little bit, but by no means easy. The lack of power compared to the Gen 4 car doesn't give it any extra downforce, which is the main problem. You're not exactly looking at this car and thinking, oh, this car could do with a bit more horsepower. You're thinking, oh, it could do with a bit more grip, actually, but uh, uh, you don't really get that from the Gen 4, to be honest. You just get a little bit less power, making it a little bit easier. The thing that makes it easier is, is the traction zone through here. They, they won't be feathering the throttle quite so much, and they'll already be... You know, they'll get to full throttle down this straight, which in the Gen 4, you really wouldn't be on full throttle for very long because you're feathering it for so long. But these cars can get away with it, and it's probably for the best, really, in such a difficult circuit. Mm, don't get a wrapping north of 600, you know, brake horsepower, and they're not slouches by any form of the imagination and, and I think it, it's yeah I think if, if I was in this series and I saw this car on, the way, on this track I'm not entirely sure I'd have been overly happy about it but obviously Raymond Tio, Eric Crockville, Aaron Smith and Rick Putnam at the moment, Dave Mole, Dean Dilt, Sadler, Costa Hernandez and Benjamin Lamberton with AJ Conlon still running are obviously happy about it. We'll have a look back at the Corey Stas incident at the end. There's been a couple of others as well. Petra Misek is also another one that's got it all a little bit wrong. So we'll have a look back at that at the end of the race. But these two, it'll be interesting to know what Aaron Smith's going to do. I think for him, he's just got to kind of sit there and wait until, you know, the dock in the home before he actually tries to make any moves. I think so. I think so. I think that's what we'll have to wait for here. It's going to be a very high speed. It's going to be quite a short time on the dotting hurdle because Ooh. this could be the fastest car under the bridge this season. Mm. If, unless I'm missing a car, that might be quick. the Super Formula might be quite quick, but it won't be quite as quick as this. You know, they'll be reaching Daytona. After all, you know, no restrictive pace. Super speed. 
speedway speed by the end of that straight. You know, I don't, I don't actually know the measurement of that straight, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's nearly as long as Daytona at the Oval itself. Certainly as long as a mile and a half, like Vegas, so or two miles. So it's uh, it, it's going to be scary on the way in, that's for sure. As they round the final few corners now, this is through Strabo Transfer, the climb carousel. Oh, it's not a great run through there for Aaron Smith. That was the key moment into Gowenkopf as well. He needed a good run. He might be too far away now. Yeah, um, including Tiergarten, the Doing a Ho is 2,860 metres. It's 2.8 kilometres. That's, that's, about, that's about three quarters of Daytona. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just doing, doing, well, I'm, I'm going to try and see if I can get up how long that is in miles. 1.77 miles, stopping north of 170, 180 mile an hour at the moment. Still climbing, well, literally and figuratively, with climbing speed and climbing the hill as well. Just over 190 as they go oh. under the bridge here, you know, it, and it feels fast as well. Mm. Well, but now we're riding on board. Have a look at this too. The Tiergarten is a real long braking zone now when you're coming from that kind of speed. And they get it all stopped in time. Yes, I think Crop was a little bit later struggle. on the brakes, but he made it work. Good line from Smith there, really gained a lot of time, but. Next lap around, he needs to be better through the small carousel and he needs to be right there by the Jossica Hurt because it actually isn't an easy overtake. You need to be pretty close. Yeah, you do. You've got to be normally within about three tenths in tin tops. It's not too bad in open wheelers and, um, and things like the little MX-5. You can be sort of six, seven, eight tenths away in them uh, to be able to close the gap. But I think where these are more sort of blocky machines, I think they would need to be a little bit closer. But we'll keep an eye and see how close Smith can get. This is the closest barrel on the racetrack at the moment. Everybody else is a little bit far away from each other. But I, I think overall, for the people that have finished, the fact that we said, you know, we've still got 11 going. Don't get me wrong, I said if we can get 10 finished, it would be amazing. And at the moment, we've got 11. So let's see how it works. Corey Stas is in for repairs. He's been in for about five and a half weeks at the moment. Oh, blimey, that back end. Oh, the switch back end jumped up there as it went over the brow of the hill. Seems to me that Patrick Mish has had problems this race as well. I think he is going now, but uh, he's only just begun. So uh, he's quite a long way off the back of the field as well. Side by side into Schwedenkreutz. This could be brave. And Smith decides that it's probably not a good idea, and I agree. So he backs out, and then they break together into Arenberg. And now wide for Krupper. Maybe this is the chance. Smith goes through on the inside. I was about to say, where is this overtake going to happen? If not on the top of your home. Even then, it's going to be tricky, but you wait for the error. And that's a risky thing to do with the front row, the championship leader, who's made very little this season. But that was one of them. And Aaron Smith goes through into second place. Yeah, job done for Smith. I think it's going to be tough for Krautfeld to get a hold of him now because Smith does look quick. And I wouldn't be surprised if he managed to get up to Raymond Teo. But then last time out, they were very close. 7.15.09, 7.15.42 in favour of Raymond in the front there. So Smith's going to have his work cut out. But I think if he can open that gap and not have to worry about Krautfeld, which is what he is doing at this moment in time, I've got a funny feeling he should be all right to try and extend that gap even more. I think Crackfield's doing what Crackfield does best and just tries to get it to the end of the race. You know, you can imagine he was hard on that brakes round Arenberg to make sure he stayed on the racetrack and not in on the grass. And he's just got it, he managed to get it stopped, which is great because it could have got a whole lot wrong for Crackfield there. They've got one and a half laps to go. Um, Aaron Smith's got the gap down 2.6 teetering around that area. So if he can get it down further, I think Smith could, could get up to T.O. on this one. Yeah, I think so. I think there's a chance, that's for sure. And he's certainly showing himself to be quicker than Krapwald here, who has not stuck with Smith at all. And Smith has romped away, really. Just to look at some of the other drivers in the field. Dan Kosick here is in eighth place. Oh, oh dear. A little bit wide into that now, Forrest. Pretty tricky, actually, in uh, even the GT3, mm. the fastest cars that normally go around here. These guys going in even faster to that section of the track. AJ Condor has been in the pit lane, but he's back out again. Now he's on his way out. Um, just getting, we saw him damage his front end on the way towards Arenberg on the opening lap. He's finally got that fixed. Yeah, he has, and he's out of running again um, for AJ. He's, well, he's not a lap down yet, because they're still on lap two. So 
it'll be a long, long way back when it comes if he can get quite to the end of it. I know Putnam has also been off the circuit, but has managed to get the car back on. Well, as I said, we'll have a look at Corey Stassi's moment at the end of the race. But uh, you, you can get a sense of by jumping sort of as we are now. Oh, to oh, the wall. The wall. Oh, wow. Just missed that one. I'm just going to say oh. how fast they were going to go up through that area, and, and Tio showed us how just how difficult it was. Well, too fast is the answer to that. He went too fast into the Mook Curva, that is for sure. Aaron Smith closes in as a result. Krupwell just, I think, lost a bit of speed since getting overtaken here, to be honest. He's dropped to three seconds behind. He was only two and a half seconds off Tio when he got overtaken. I know he went wide and made a mistake, and maybe that went up to three, three and a half, but to be nearly four seconds away, certainly a, a decline for him oh, still on the podium the fifth time in five races out over the very highest point of the circuit we're about to reach it now just at the crest of this hill the whole act there it is there's the rise and there's the fall now through the very well as you described earlier James a very fast section normally mm. it's probably a bit more precarious in these cars a lot more braking a lot more lifting off yeah I think Normally you can run a bit far and forth and you can just go straight through and then obviously you're breaking down a gear. Some people will stay in fourth, but obviously I'm talking about a conventional car here, right? I'm talking about a GT3 or an SL10, give or take, you can do the same thing in both. I've driven this circuit in multiple different cars, TCRs, SL10s, uh, you know, and they all roughly do the same thing. But I've never taken round a car like this here and I think that could be one of my challenges today and to see if you can actually win a lap in this car around this circuit because I'm sure that's probably not easy either you know but I think at the end of the day you can see they don't even lift off the jump and they, you know normally you would expect a car as we said with more power as you touched on earlier to go and lift off the jump. You know, but it's like 3,100 pounds of machine and so you know the weight ratio probably won't allow it to lift even if they want it to, to be honest. So I'm not entirely sure how that, how that really works, but I guess it makes fun for some of the maybe the car will be harder to lift off the ground. Yeah, because yeah, it doesn't matter how fast you go, if it weighs an absolute... Say, if, if, you're, if you're a that's tank true. and you're going over the same thing, it's just going to kind of drop off the edge, I think. I think that's how it works. It must do, surely. It, it makes logical sense, but it wouldn't be the first time that... Um, Logical sense didn't actually apply to physics. No. <laughs> because sometimes it doesn't. Uh, meanwhile, out of the final corner, or the final corner for the oh, back straight, anyway. And Aaron Smith is close enough, and he's got a good enough run. Now, the problem he's got is that the straight is shorter. They spend longer, if that sounds weird. They're on the straight <laughs> for less time in these cars because they're going so quickly. Compared to a GT3, for example, certainly compared to the GR86 last round, which was on here for ages, they're certainly not here. And look, Aaron Smith from four tenths behind and a good run is still not close enough. That's an illustration of just how close you need to be as they lift off under the bridge at 190 miles an hour and then try and get it stopped in time. Has Raymond Tour broken too late here? He's oh. speeding ahead and he has stopped it in time. So good job from him as they go on to the final lap. It's going to be a race for the win between these two. Oh, I'm not even in the car. I am not even in the car, and I can feel literally everything moment of panic of what was going on there. You're trying to bring that car down from 190 miles an hour, down to probably round about 50 or 60, I think it was, to get it round them corners, and that is just scary if the car's twitching as much as it was when we were on board with Aaron Swift. You know, his poor hands, but he was working like an absolute heavyweight boxer in the world title fight he was doing it that much but yeah this is going to be down the end i think we've learned something though as well right for us it's, really, it's, really well, it's quite important for us in, in doing the job that we do but i think we now know that he was four and a half temps out and he was still one and a half one and three quarter temps short of being able to get through so if you take that off it brings us down to the two and a half temps that we said about earlier on you need and by the way that four tenths was with a good run from Aaron Smith and he's got a good run through Flugplatz again he had this when he was battling with Krautwald but he wasn't able to go anywhere with it because 
it was, uh, well, I mean, look at it. It's too difficult into Sven Kreutz here, and the same applies here. Brown Smith, although his run maybe wasn't quite as good as the one he got a couple of laps ago, trying to overtake the series leader. Into Arenberg they go. That's where Kevin Kratwald went wide, allowing Smith to go through. I've got to say, argue anyway, that the number 70 is the fastest car in this race, but it's not about being the fastest sometimes on the road side, but it's about having the track position and even even to get to this position, Aaron Smith's done well from fourth. He's made an average overtake per lap and a half. That's a decent record because you've only really got one chance per lap. And so he's uh, he's done a good job with regards to that. But now there's just one more overtake to go to take him to what would be a very impressive race win. Yeah, it definitely would be. He's done an absolutely incredible job. And I said he looked quick and I said it was going to be hard for Theo. Obviously, Theo did not help himself, mind you, by making one little mistake. But these guys are showing the rest of the field how they do it. And I, I think when you see Arca Menards at Nords, right, despite what league you're in, you get your butt out on track and practice, 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 because you need to. And if some of these haven't quite done that, they could be in, well, they are showing, it's, they're, they're in trouble, because obviously the likes of Tio, the likes of Smith, they're going too fast to not have done laps, if you get what I mean on that one. Yeah, this is a good run out of the uh, corner of her ex-ruler here for, for Smith, although it's not really a great chance down here into ex Muller itself. A siphon is the previous corner. These two section of corners do look very similar to me. The uh, right hand that was more a sharp one, right hand on the way out. Okay. And then towards Bergwerk they go now. So is there a chance for a dive here? Probably not, because this left hander has once again it's actually a corner to think about in these cars. And then you've pretty much immediately got to get on the brakes to make it very easy for Smith. So through Bergwerk they go now on the way towards the roof curve. Chance, and in fact, in all the cars we've had so far this season, it, is, it would be a chance, but it's not really in these cars. No, it's not. Dan Kosick has just had a moment as well. Look at the front end of his car, it's a little bit bruised and battered. So, we'll try and have a look back at that towards the end of the race as well. But it is that run now up into the carousel section of the race circuits. You say normally you could probably go too wide and get cars through. Here, I wouldn't even want to see if I was Aaron Smith. I would literally just concentrate on what I'm doing. I know what I've got coming up, and I've got a lot of complicated corners to be dealing with here as well. It's got to go left, got to get it stopped. Around the corner, he's got to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got to get it up through the carousel. The carousel's actually a bit surprisingly easy for, for people so far. I'm not saying it is easy, but they found it pretty easy. I'll say that and someone will pop out. Oh, there you go. There's a slide and there's another slide. So, uh, sorry about that, Aaron Smith. I've cursed you in the past. Because, uh, I said it was easy. And now look at the gap. Nearly nine tenths of a second. It's a good job. We've got the twistiest section coming up to make up those nine tenths and get to within three tenths by the time they get through down and drop onto the back straight. He's closing at an absolute rapid rate of knots. He lost two tenths at the carousel. He's got them back already. Uh, he's six, was he nearly seven tenths out at the moment? Again, I would normally say that that's not massive, but as he's proven, we need to be within two and a half to three tenths on that back run down through the dot in the hose. So I think he's going to have to try and really take a little bit risk. You've got to risk it for a biscuit now, right? You're on the final lap, you're sitting in second, the leader's up the road. You've surely just got to go for it. And I probably, that's probably why I don't score points in a league, because I do stupid things. But I would go for it now as well if I was Alan Smith. Just run it as fast as what you think you can to make sure you can keep hold of it. I don't, I don't see why Smith shouldn't go for it here, to be honest. I mean, it's not quite championship aspirations I wouldn't have thought it'd be a very late charge if he didn't have any Raymond Tio himself though will try and try and hold this one off he's been at a couple of the races so far this season best he's managed so far is second back in the TCRs a few weeks ago now though he is looking for first 
Aaron Smith looking to try and take his first race win of the season as well. We're going to get a new winner in the series, whatever happens between these two, unless they both crash and the championship leader comes through to take a third win of the season himself. But that's looking unlikely for the moment with nearly five seconds back to him. It is three temps. Smith is close enough. A crucial couple of corners coming up for him now. Yeah, he's got to get it in there. He's got to keep it free, free, four. He can't afford to lose any time going up around the right hand. And now he's got to try and close that out. He cannot be out at five and six. We've seen it. He can't be. Oh, he's just touching the edge. Just touching the edge. Four. Well, good luck because this is going to be close. Well, good luck, Aaron Smith, because he's too far back, I would have thought. And two, making it even more difficult by weaving around. All he's got to do now is focus on that braking zone and do not crash in this final section of the lap. Oh. Raymond Till will be a race winner for the first time this season if he does achieve that. Smith closes and closes again. All he can do is try and put brakes on him and break as late as possible to try and give this a go. Into the tear garden they go. Left and right again. Oh. Till breaks early enough. Oh. Not quite as risky that time. Smith locks up because he risked everything, oh. but he can't do it. Raymond Teo is going to be a race winner in the Battle of the Ring. <laughs> it is just about there ahead of Aaron Smith. Eight tenths of a second is the gap at the line. We've got our third different winner in five races as series leader Evan Crutwell comes over the line on the podium for the fifth race in a row as well. Yeah, Crutwell is, is a podium master when he needs to, and he's done a great job again. But that was so close. Tio made it so hard. I, I don't normally like weaving, right? I normally sit here and go, look, one move. Let's let's not be weaving jumpers across the, across the line there. But I suppose from Tio's point of view, he didn't, did he have an, oh, I don't know. I don't know, I'll, I'll leave the league to look at that one and, and see if they decide what he's done is wrong. But uh, is he breaking the draft? Is he weaving? Who knows, Ewan, who knows? Yes, who knows indeed. But uh, what is for sure is that Emmett Teo is the winner of race five of the Ring Runners for 2024 season two. And it was a great race as well. Sometimes at the Dodge Cypher, you get some pretty boring races with not much overtaking, but that was a great battle for the league. One thing I do want to bring up here, Jens, before we look at the championship standings, we're going to have a look at them, uh, uh, what they look like after this race in a moment. But I want to highlight something. Going into today, Evan Crutwell had the championship lead by 22 points ahead of Jason Hightower, who's not here. Matt Green, third, he's not here. Corey Stas, you'll notice, is in the pit lane. He's 13th. And then this man, Dan Kosick, he's fifth in the standings. He is the first driver to complete this, or the, or the best oh. driver, other than the championship leader, to complete this race, as he was just about complete it. He's all the way down in eighth. Generally, even though Crutwell was far from the fastest driver today, he was comfortably third, in fact. Mm. But he extends his championship lead, and comfortably so, as well. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Crutwell, for me, is, is the Mr. Consistent. He almost reminds me of Evan Way from the IGP, the one we did that season, where he was just consistent. And I think he finished like fourth or fifth in the championship. You know, just to be that consistent, 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 getting these tough cars to the end of the race. That's what they've got to do. And Krautfeld just seems to be able to do that. He, he's just done it so well. So... Fair play to Evan Krautfeld. If he goes on and wins his championship, I think it will be his consistency that will take him there. Absolutely. And, of course, his two race wins as well, which shows uh, quite yeah. good speed, I would say. Uh, but, well, uh, but Corey yeah, Stas didn't help him. I will say Corey Stas didn't help himself on that one by crashing on the final lap. That's true, yeah. Well, yeah, on the uh, on the second lap, indeed. It was, uh, it was, it was early on, but, yeah. I yeah, know, it was high tower tower that crashed on the final lap in the first race, I think. Yeah, it was. Okay. high tower crashed on the final lap, literally there. Right, OK, yeah, there we oh, go. Yeah. Oh, dear. That's so we're about to see there from <laughs> Lamberton. Lamberton. Just about gets there in 10th place, and he just about beats Patrick Meach, who's been closing in. I said earlier on, by the way, he was having issues on the first couple of laps. It was just our timing that wasn't picking him, picking him up for some reason. So uh, he eventually got scored after a couple of laps, and he's going to be finishing in 11th place. AJ Condon, auto driver to the line. I mean, a race of trials and tribulations for him. We saw him spin into Arenberg first time round, but... I didn't think he had any particular problems after that, but he's always starting on the back foot there, having to 
take a pit stop after lap two, and he's finishing three quarters of a minute behind anybody else. Yeah, but he's finished. So, yep. you know, points are points, right? He's going to get points for it. He's finished. That's the that's the best thing about it. Um, Corey Stas is, is still in the pit lane. Let's bring you up the results, and then we'll have a look at some of these little incidents that we've seen. I think there's probably about four major ones that we can have a look back at as AJ Condon does go over the line. So we'll bring you up the results there for you, sir. Yep, so uh, this is how they finished. Roman Tour finishes at eight tenths of a second in the head ahead of Aaron Smith, who drove well from fourth place. Evan Kropard extends his championship lead with another podium. Rick Putnam and David Mull round out the top five. Dean Diltz finishes sixth. We didn't see much of him, but he had a consistent race. The last driver to finish with inside a minute. Scott Sadler finished seventh ahead of Dan Kosick, who was eighth. Then Dave Hernandez at two minutes back. The only driver, he had about a minute either side of him, or just a thereabouts. Dave Hernandez uh, then ahead of Benjamin Lamberton, who we just saw come over the line there in the grass, ahead of Patrick Mish, then AJ Condon, and then those that didn't finish. Corey Stas, who finished two laps down after crashing on lap two. And C uh, Chris Blanford didn't start for whatever reason. So I don't think he'll score any points for that. No. Um, but, uh, but we'll... Uh, no, indeed. No, he will not. Uh, Corey Stas will score points for it, though, by the way. Gets uh, gets five for his efforts throughout. Let's have a look at some of the incidents throughout, though, before we have a look at the standings. This is AJ Condon into Arabo. We saw this at the time, but not very well. There's the start of it. That's the damage that he received. Terrible damage, but... Uh, it was enough to see him in pit lane after a couple of laps. Yeah, this is Benjamin Lamburn. Uh, this is what, what we saw earlier on. Obviously, he went off the side of the circuit. He just kept running. Oh, oh fuck the barrier. I, realize he, yeah, I didn't realise he grabbed the wall quite so hard, mm. but he did. I think he was just avoiding the 48 a little bit, actually. So he sent him around. Now, this was the big incident of the race. Dave Hernandez initially did a good save, then lost it straight into the pack. Oh, dear, oh, dear. And it was... A, uh, a big incident, I'm afraid, down there. Dan Kosick was the one caught up and luckily involved. This is Patrick Mish's view of it. We get quite a view, view of Dan Kosick getting caught out by this. Bang! Oh. There you go. He just had no Mish slows down to go. as well. Yeah, he ended up jumping back so, to the pits. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Kosick ends the day with just five points. Uh, excuse me. Five points. What am I talking about? Ten points. Excuse me for him in the day. So, uh, a big loss. That's a big crash for Corey Tass. So that's what saw him. Yeah. And, oh, that's the engine gone. So that's why he didn't return. Yeah, you can just see he just got it all a little bit wrong. He went over the brow and then the car just got up in the air and then it all just went a little bit wrong right there. Now this, I, I can vouch for Corey here. You cannot stop that car. You've got no hope on the speed that you're entering into that one. So you cannot stop that car at all. Rick Putnam had his own little moment here. Um, as he's coming over the hill, that's on the run. I think that's on the run up to where is it? On the carousel. He just goes in and grabs the wall there. AJ Condon did have another incident, um, and this would be his second, uh, yeah, second one of this race as well. So he goes, oh, he bumps the wall again. You know what I mean? But I think this is one that obviously affected Dan Kosick once more. Oh, dearie me, this looks familiar. Yep. Oh, he loses it on the rear brakes there. Ah, just, it's Go always see. really key in these cars to mm -hmm. keep the brake bias forwards. And so he actually gets away with that, really. Yeah, this is the last one when Lambert. Um, um, he's already, well, you can see his car's already battered. When you can see the uh, tyres, and this was right at the end of the race where he just ran it. And over the road. So that is uh, pretty much all the major. And to be fair, like, they, they were just errors that you would expect from this. That's the thing, yeah. right? I think... For us, this arc around, there was errors that we expected and um, kind of thought we might have got a bit more. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't think it would be rude to say we maybe expected a little bit more, but driving for everybody to make sure incidents were kept to a mm -hmm. minimum. Let's have a look at the championship standings afterwards. Then, as this is a pre-recorded broadcast, we can uh, we can do this. So, Evan Gratwald is still the championship leader, but look at the margin now. It extends by 16 points, 17 points indeed. Jason Hightower wasn't here, but he retained second. Matt Green retains third, although Corey Strass has caught up to him, despite the issues we've just shown you. Dan Kosick lost about six, seven points to Crowell and stays fifth in the standings. Ratio jumps up to sixth with a win, ahead of Dave Mull 
Dave Hernandez and Scott Sadler are now tied for eight. And Rick Putnam rounds out the top ten. Dean Dilt's 11th after his performance today. Pat Macy is 14th. Uh, Aaron Smith now on the board in 16th position in the uh, championship standings. That's his first uh, race of the season, which is why he's all the way down there. And I think that's pretty much all the drivers we've had so far in today's race. AJ Condor's down in 23rd, but we, we, uh, now I'm talking um, about stuff that's not on our standings because uh, the yeah, screen's not big enough, to be honest. Uh, so uh, AJ Condon is 23rd, I can tell you, and that is it. So that's all of the... Ah, oh, there they are. Uh, and you can see those who've scored a minimum points so far this season. But good to have 34, 33, 34 drivers on the standings because uh, that means we've had plenty of different drivers through the battle at the ring. Uh, well, I think that's just about going to do it for us here today, James. Good to be on the, one of these broadcasts for the first time. Always enjoy the Nord Cipher. And I've enjoyed the challenge, to be honest, of these mm. drivers to go for here in the in the archicast yeah right. <laughs> well, I we might have enjoyed the challenge here yeah, i yeah. don't know if they enjoyed the challenge no <laughs> but either way it was good i i think the thing we said out the 14 if we can get 10 we've done well but they've got 12 so fair play and chris blanford never took to the start so we only lost Corey stas and we've seen why right which is understandable so i think at the end of the day they've all done really well and i think the they can come out of this and go into the next one with the GT4s. Very optimistic, because if you can get an ARCA car around here, the GT4 is going to seem like an absolute breeze. It is, but we're on the combined VLN layout, of course, so we will be doing a bit of the GP circuit. Uh, that's a layout we'll be visiting just once more after that for the GTEs as well. So uh, look out for that one uh, too. But uh, thanks very much for going to uh, join us again. It's been pre-recorded of course but i uh, hope that you've enjoyed it nevertheless it's been the tail racing battle at the ring round five here for the arca cars we'll be back again uh, pretty soon for the gt4 class as uh, as i mentioned we're um, behind on that broadcast too we're what, six days ago that happened now so uh, we will bring that broadcast to you when we can as well but uh, but for now thanks very much for coming to join us and watch i've been yona leary uh jed parfit has been alongside me until we see you again for the gt4 class at the combined vln layout it's goodbye for now